Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make an easy collar weld. Now the reason why I s express the easy portion is because this doesn't really require any special tooling other than a hot cut for your heart. Uh, anvil or just something you can hold by hand and the two pieces of material to be joined. We will get into a lot more complex collar welds later on in the future, stuff that has sculpted collars and things like that, and I'll go over those. But we're going to go with an easy, we're going to go with these easy welds first. So the first thing we need to do is I've got my two pieces of material in the fire. I've got my collaring material that I'm going to take and make the collar out of, and then I've got the main bar that I'm going to collar to. The main bar is a piece of half inch round stock or 12.5 millimeters, and the, the collar that I'm going to collar onto the bar is quarter inch material or say 3 16 material, 4.5 millimeters, uh, roughly. It's We've got that by about half inch or 12.5 millimeters. So we're gonna do this, so this way we can create a small little collar. The first step in this juncture, we're gonna draw down a taper, just a short little taper on the end to create a scarf. We don't need a whole lot of taper here. We just need it to be a really short, blunt taper. Right on the end, just to make a very small scarf. Okay, you want that scarf to be no more than, you want the taper on the end of this bar to be no more than the material thickness that you're scarfing. Hopefully that makes sense. So since this is 3 16 material or 4.5 mil, that is what you want that end taper to be. When you look at the flat of that taper, when it reflects at you, that's what you want that to be. Now we are ready to take and go ahead and cut this. I am going to assume, actually before we do that, I'm gonna show you the easier way of doing it. We're gonna heat this piece back up. And while this is getting heated back up, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this material, my half inch material. Now, whenever you're doing a collar weld, you wanna make sure that you pre-upset the material first. So this material is actually approximately 5 eighths of an inch thick. It's just a bit, maybe probably more like 9 sixteenths. But we're gonna call it 5 eighths of an inch for easy math in the metric, which is 16 mil. So we've got the area upset, significantly thickened where we're gonna do our collar weld because you will lose some material thickness as you make your weld. So that's doing good there. What we need to do now is I'm gonna leave this sit out for a second. We let it sit off the edge of the anvil here. And we need to take and bend this piece around where it's actually gonna end up making a difference or where it's going to weld on. So I'm gonna go ahead and start real close to it. Bend it back on itself. But now before I go too far, this will take a surprisingly good amount of material. We're gonna estimate from there. Roughly about where that's at, I need to cut it off right about in here. And that should be about the right amount of material once I take and draw my scarf. So now that I've got that information, I'm gonna put it over here on my hot cut. And I'm gonna cut off in one direction. And that's going to take and get it kind of prepped. So now we got to stick this piece back in and we're going to shape it around our round rod. So let me get this good and hot. If this seems like it's a bit of a process, it really is. It's just something that you kind of have to play with a little bit and get comfortable with. Once you've done a few of them successfully, if you've done your other forge welding exercises, uh, done all of your simple or your fundamental forge welding processes, and you've gotten good at those, this is really simple. It's not hard to make at all. So just, you know, keep practicing. If you're not there yet, just keep practicing. So I'm gonna take and bend that down more. 
go ahead and roll that around. That's gonna be good. See? See how much material that takes? It takes a lot more material than you'd think to take and do this. So now we need to break this off. So I can close it up here. Get rid of that bar next time. And so now I'm gonna take and just try to close this in ever so slightly into what looks like a round scarf. Hopefully you guys can see that. You can see the transition there. It's not quite come together on the scarf and that's fine. We need to take and fit onto this piece and be fairly tight. So I'm gonna tuck that under. So now we're gonna drive that piece up a little further where we need it to be, where that collar needs to be. It's right on the end of that bar. If you hammer on it here, it's just going to take and expand out on you, so you don't need to do that. You're gonna see a little bit of gappage. That's good, that's what you want. You want this to be able to flow together as we roll it and get it forge welded up. Now, because this will most likely trap flux, or this will most likely trap scale, we are going to put just a hair bit of flux right here on the end and right at the beginning, and that's all you have to do. Very light fluxing. Do not drown the piece. You will inhibit your weld if you drown the piece in flux. So now we're gonna get this back up and going. Take it up to a nice heat. Ooh, get that bar stock out of the way. Now we're gonna bring it up to a nice forge welding heat. So as you can see in about the seven minutes that it took me to do that, most of the work is all in the prep work getting this ready to go. So once you've got that figured out, it's, you're good to go. If you need to be more accurate, there's math that you can calculate amount of material to take and wrap any given op object. I will put that math, um, how to calculate the exact amount of circumference of material that you need to take and wrap. I'll put that equation down in the you know, description down below if you need that. Uh, and uh, hopefully that will help you out there make your make your welding or make your figuring on this a lot easier. So I'm going to bring this piece up to heat nice and slow. Again, we've got our thick bar stock. It's not quite there yet, but our collar material is probably going to be a lot closer to its welding heat already. So we need to take and let this sit without any oxygen getting at it. We want this piece to come up to a nice welding heat altogether. The thick portion of it that we're welding to and the collar. It does not help if the collar is up to a welding heat and then the center bar is still too cold to weld, you're just gonna stretch the material and you'll lose the collar. What I've done here, and this is why I've called it an easy, an easy welding scarf, is you just eyeball how much material you think it takes to take and wrap around. Just kinda like you would eyeball your, you know, your thumb going around like this. You're just gonna eyeball the amount of material and it's about right. Uh, it's okay if it's a little too much, you can just close it up a little bit and you'll have a little longer joint that you have to work down, but you'll also have more mass of material that you can work with. So it kind of plays out to your benefit either way. So this is up, it's getting really close to that welding heat. I think this piece is basically there. I can't see either the end of the bar or the collar, so now we're going to take and weld this up. We're gonna go with some light, quick blows, and we're just gonna keep rolling it, keep rotating it as you go here. So here we go, pick it straight up out of the fire. We're gonna work that scarf together. And now, straighten this up a bit. That's basically welded, but we're gonna put it back in the fire, bring it back up to a nice welding heat, and we'll go at it again. So we keep this going nice and hot. If you keep it at a welding heat and you don't work it down to where it's completely cold, you bring it out, you do seven or eight good hammer blows on it, put it back in the fire, bring it out, do it again, so on and so forth like that you will keep the piece at a much higher heat 
uh, welding heat and it will go a lot better for you. Your welds will than if you don't. Now, obviously it just slipped down so it did not weld. I had a very light stick on there but I hammered the wrong direction and so therefore it did not weld in very nicely. So the collar slipped ever so slightly, which is fine. We're just going to add just a bit more flux to it. Just because now that end's all dirty, right? Because we've been pulling it out, we've been scaling it all up here. Got an oxygen all over it. I'm going to get this raked back up and over it. And get a good amount of coke laying around it. And we're going to bring it back up to welding heat. So again, take your time, do the job right, and you won't have to worry about things like this. So once you get the outer ring stuck good, then you can come in and lightly dress the top portion of this piece, and that will help weld it in as well. It'll help weld in the top piece. And then it's a great way of you know producing a lot of material on the end of a bar where you wouldn't normally have that you can then do decorative things with later or at a later date. So it's a very handy thing to know how to do. I'm bringing that thing back up to a welding heat. So much for a quick demonstration. If you made it to this, <laughs> if you've made it to this point in the video, I just thank you so much for sponsoring us here at Christ Center and Ironworks. Uh, your viewership really does help this channel grow um, and it tells YouTube, it sends a message to YouTube that we want good quality content online. So go ahead and drop down if you made it to this point, hashtag good quality content here. Um, let's send a message to YouTube by watching good videos from other Smiths like this, that this is the type of stuff we want, not big cat videos and stuff like that. Again, I'm being a little more selective with my blows on this one because I want it to weld in good this time. I'm going to upset the material bit while I've got the chance. I'm not welding this up just yet. Just want to take and get it, not lose any thickness out of this piece. We're going to take one more welding heat on this. It's getting real close. Almost fully there. Take one more welding heat on this. All right, bring that back up to a nice welding heat and we'll go at it one, this one last time. So if you have a swedge block, it would be very handy for making welds like this. Yes, you can do them on the anvil itself. Um, it will make it a lot handier if you have a swedge block because it'll hold two of the other sides for you while you work it and spin it, and it'll keep everything nice and symmetrical for you. Um, again, I'm just trying to show you how you can still do that at the anvil without any sort of specialty tooling. I'm going to bring this piece back up to a nice welding heat again and we'll take this the rest of the way. So it's way over temp, put too much oxygen in it, but that's okay. You don't want it to be coming out blaring like that like I just did. That's more or less burning it. So we're hanging it over the edge of the anvil and we're hitting on the collar to try to center everything back up. And again, this is how you make the collar weld. So this piece, now I can hammer on this piece and brad that top down. And this can be welded again if need be. And you take as much time as you need to take and clean this up. That's where we're going to leave the video right now. Let you guys practice that type of weld. Hopefully this was informative to you. If it was, 
Remember to hit that like button, share it with your friends. We greatly appreciate it. And if you want to take and support what we do here at Christ Centered Ironworks financially, a great way of you doing that is checking out our website over at blacksmithpds.com. So that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. That's how you make a collar weld. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll catch you on the next one.